Hey guys, welcome to the live uh, episode, another episode of Coffee with Mirko. Uh, today it's uh, another special occasion, another special guest, another good episode for us. In today's episode, we'll be joined by the two-time Australia Cup Brewer, Brewers Cup champion, uh, David Long. He's also the creator of the Long Pour, which we will unpack during this interview. I've received lots of online, offline questions for the guest, and he's currently working at Ona Coffee in Melbourne, and I'm sure he has some exciting news in regards to that too. So, without further ado, today I'm not brewing my coffee. Lux folk in the house. Hey D, Uma. Today I'm not brewing my coffee, we're starting straight in. Uh, we'll wait for Devin and then we'll we'll get going. Uh, it's good to see you, Lux folk. I hope you're well, hope you're safe. Like all of you guys who are gonna tune in later on, as usual. Hey, I'm RTM. I might send the invite straight to Devin, so he will join us briefly and we'll hop online. Yeah, it's 5 p.m. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a Napa Piri. Uh, it's, a, it's to hide the status of my hair because they're the weird length, uh, but that's okay. It's a, it's a trademark now, the beanie or the cap until my hair are the right length. <laughs> um, hey, hey, wrong. And uh, yeah, so like I said, for people who tuning in, I might pin the comment here. Um, talking with Devin Long, ask questions, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to talk to Devin as well, and we'll see when he joins through. Uh, it's always tricky on Instagram, you never know. Oh, here it is. Devin is in the building, so without further ado, we're gonna bring him on. Hey, man. Hey, mate. <laughs> What's good? <laughs> yeah, everything's good, man. <laughs> good to see you, man. It's been it's been a couple of months since the last yeah, time man. I saw you. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, how's you and your family doing with the whole virus? Are you guys well? You good? Yeah, we're really good. Uh, just homeschooling. A little bit like my wife's normally doing like the homeschooling uh, i've got three kids the oldest is seven like so he's grade one uh second one the boy christopher he's like uh kinder so it, like literally doesn't learn anything just has fun <laughs> and the baby is <laughs> one so she just tries to cause trouble most of the time right like that yeah, this is my son. Oh, Hi. here it is. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too good. Um, and, um, well, seems everyone is good, which is good. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's I'm glad. Good. How have you been? Good. Good, man. Just, uh, you know, processing and uh, doing uh, different things because we can't do what's considered normal. So, mm -hmm. uh lockdown was a chance for me to create this space and this big virtual communal table where we can all have a cup of coffee together and uh, have amazing guests like yourself to talk about their stories, your journey, your experiences and adding value to people where, you know, without a job or they're on a break or they can't work. So yep. that's what I've been up to. So what about you, man? What what, what have you been up to? Since the so, you're, you're still going out to Brunswick, yeah. So like buildings almost completed already uh, on our Melbourne. Um, okay. So I've been like kind of busy with that mainly, um, uh, like doing a little bit more videos and stuff, putting them online, like sharing. Um, but I was doing that kind of preparing for nationals already, just putting out videos to kind of share my process on getting to the com like the videos can it kind of change a little bit um not just about competition and now instead of uh that time i had like a month to share videos now i've got like 
like a lot a lot longer to like share <laughs> different videos so i'm like uh, i'm like kind of having fun with it uh yeah but nah uh, everything else been good um i'm i'm actually enjoying this time weirdly i'm busier than before the covid uh, <laughs> which is which is funny um but nah i'm just keeping busy that's very good man i like i like your positive attitude i think a lot of people uh, struggle to see the positives sometimes in many situations and i think now if we go health and financial sorted or not in a bad place you know it's a good time for us to develop and grow and uh, self-improve and do all the things that we can't do when we're very busy with different things outside home um now to get things started i usually ask this question um how did you get started into your coffee journey? How I got started. So, like, I came to Australia in 2008. Um, was an electrical engineer before, back in Malaysia. Um, I studied here, like, uh, I think early 2000. Like, I'm not that young anymore. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Back, <laughs> when I came to Australia, I just wanted to do something different. And I've always liked kind of F&B, kind of had this grand dream of opening a pizza shop. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I thought Australians love pizza, so I'm like, oh yeah, pizza shop. Um, but then <laughs> found like, ooh, cool, like there's this whole like cafe scene that I didn't know about. And that's kind of when it first started. Uh, and like just learning about coffee, working in a coffee shop, kind of fell in love with it. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I started in like the coffee journey um, mm. and did my first barista com, like just because a friend was telling me like, oh, let's do this together. There's a barista com. I didn't know any better. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, what does it involve? Like, just watch this video. I watch the video. Eh, I think we could do it. Like, had like four <laughs> weeks to prepare for a barista com. So, I, like, I didn't know anything back then, but, like, sometimes, like, what you don't know uh, is good. <laughs> That's um, right. Yeah. And, like, just did my first barista com, uh, bombed out. It was, like, I can't remember, eight place or something. Uh, that was the first year Craig Simon won. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, was a very very good experience. Uh, bumped into a guy at the back of like that barista com doing filter coffee. He had a, a kind of pop up called um, Black Coffee Shop pop up. So it's okay. uh, Mark Free, um, the owner of Everyday Coffee, who just had like just a pop up that just did filter coffee back back when. Like, filter coffee wasn't big. I was like, cool. Like, what coffee do you want? Like, you just literally donation-based. Uh, like, gave him, like, what I thought, like, was a lot of money for a filter coffee. I gave him $5. And I was like, he's like, which coffee do you want? I'm like, oh, I don't know. What is this one? Like, let me try this. Uh, Esmeralda Geisha. Oh, yeah, let, 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 let me try. <laughs> try that. And, like, I was sitting in the back of, like, the competition like in the audience and i was like what the hell is this like what did i pay for this i should have given him more money for this like uh that that was like my first kind of filter that changed like kind of how i saw filter um few months later i, I kind of was in the city walked into brother baba buden and that was where he was managing had an A4 piece of papers outside saying, like, uh, looking for barista. My wife was with me. She said, like, oh, you should apply. Back then, I was working in, like, a drive through coffee place. Like, had no idea what specialty coffee was. Uh, and I just went up to him, like, oh, do you remember me? I was at, like, calm. Like, he remembered me. And he's like, yeah, cool. Come back another day, drop off your resume. So I drop off my resume. And a few weeks later, he called me up, like, you want a job? And I was like, hmm, cool. Sure. And yeah, and that's where I started kind of my specialty coffee journey in uh, Brother Baba Budan. And I was like washing dishes for a good three, four months. 
and like slowly kind of introducing me onto the machine. Like, like although it was, I think a really crazy, hectic place to work with, um, the people that was working there were like, like fantastic. They like, like when it was quiet, like three o'clock in the afternoon, closing down, they get you come go on shots and they like look after you and then they graduate you to milk and they're like oh no I can't pour any latte out. don't worry just pour the takeaways we'll pour the latte out like and with like a line out the door it was like it taught me kind of how to um, be patient and how to handle stress um, and yeah it was like really good experience for one of like the craziest still to the, this day like one of the busiest cafes in melbourne um and it's definitely one of the iconic uh spots yeah. in melbourne and uh, i i i think you know I, I still go there you know i think it's one of those mm. it's an evergreen uh, type of cafe as yeah. far as i'm concerned and so, as long as the crew is the yeah. same and the cup is the same and you already answered mm-hmm. question number two, which is you got started competition by chance, which is inc- incredible. And uh, uh, <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would, would, would you ever compete in other categories moving forward? Would you go back into the path of compete for barista or latte art, or you just want to stick to brewers? Mm, I think I just stick to brewers. Like I've done it so many years already. Um, and I think like it actually doesn't really matter which um, category you go into. Uh, I believe it's more um, kind of what it teaches you and how much you grow from doing a competition. Um, yes, of course. Like everybody wants to win. Like uh, I like there's like even I want to win. But I think the the whole idea is it's not about winning. It's all about the journey you take to win and how much you discover about yourself and how much you discover like, like the coffee can taste differently and uh, what the water affect like, and everything. That's more important. I think like, I've been lucky to have won my first Brewers Cup I ever joined. Um, but that didn't stop me from like, trying, to, um, trying to improve myself and like you're only as good as your last brew, I think. So like I was just like just just keep improving, like whether win lose, whatever you just like as long as you keep doing it and you do it to discover yourself, that's the most important. That's why like if people ask should you compete, always ask what do you want. At the end, if you just want to win, like I'd say don't compete because like once you win. And then what? That's why a lot of people go like, "Cool, if you win, then what?" And like, if you don't have an answer to then what, then it's difficult because once you get there, you're you're almost more lost than before. Hundred percent. And 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 in terms of technique, obviously, you know, you created a long, long pour, yeah. long pour, <laughs> um, and actually. Um, uh, Giancarlo, one of our followers, sent me a DM and said, look, can you please ask these questions because I'm going to rewatch it. I need to look after my daughter. I can't tune in. And he's been tuning in every single day. So, um, And he's asking two questions. So we'll put these three together. We combine it between the long pour and his questions. How do you choose the brew recipes from different beans? Say it's a natural or a washed. And how... And what about grind size and water temperature? So it's kind of three technical questions in one. Yeah, cool. Um, so my philosophy with brewing um, is pretty simple. Um, it's actually, I, I just want, first off, I want to see how much the coffee has to give. So that's why I grind pretty fine um, in terms of long pour, um, if you got a Commandante, it's about 20 clicks. Uh, if you got like the new EK, it sits about uh, at a nine, which is uh, if you look at the dial, nine. It's about 10 o'clock on the dial. So it's it's on the finer side. Um, if you're comparing it with like uh, something in your house, I'd say closer to like table salt. Um, it's where the grind size is. Um, and so... 
um, in terms of what was the other one? Like a ratio. I normally go uh, uh, one to sixteen point six, so sixty gram to a liter golden ratio. It's um, kind of what I normally base on, um, and the temperature I normally go pretty hot, like ninety seven degrees. So okay. if you look at all all of them, it's everything I think is actually kind kind of the extreme uh, in terms of extraction. Um, but it's because of the pouring method, which is only literally a bloom and then a single pour. Um, it, it doesn't allow the... It, there's no fresh water to kind of keep extracting more. So kind of what you give it at the start is all... The energy you give it in the start is all it has to kind of extract. And the method was created more actually for... wasn't to... Not necessarily wasn't to extract better, was just for more consistency. So I, I did come up with the method back when I was working at auction rooms when I first won the Brewers Cup and kind of when we first had the EK. So the EK was the first thing that came out that um, back then we were doing like three pours, like, you know, all different. And everybody's coffee was tasting different, uh, TDSing different, um, and the idea was more cool. Like, how do I um, have it more consistent? And to have it more consistent just means the less the less steps you have, the more consistent you're gonna be. The more steps you have, the more inconsistent you're gonna be. So, and it was it could only be kind of achieved because that the EK like to to now like it gave a very even particle distribution. So if if like if I got you to do like the same long pour and I did the same long pour and the kind of the only variable was the grind size, your nine on the EK and my nine on the same EK is the same it's the same number. You know, it's the same grind size. So I use the grinder to be the variable. The the rest kind of was is used to be the same and just <laughs> the grind size be the variable. So that's kind of how the long pour evolved. Mm. And in terms of, do you change your brew recipe whether you're treating a natural or a wash processed coffee or you just go with the same recipe regardless on the process of the coffee? Yeah, I go with like the same recipe. I think um, wash or natural, it's just a kind of different expression of the coffee. Uh, I'm basing it more on extraction and like cool and like if you're not extracting enough from like a wash, so you just go finer. If you're extracting too much of a natural, then you just go coarser. Um, you know? um, and and it, it doesn't mean wash or natural. Uh, it just means like whatever. If the coffee was roasted darker, then and you're extracting too much, you go coarser. Like the thing, it's a base of. Uh, just wash or natural. I, I kind of look at it as uh, just a coffee and how do I extract this coffee. Mm. And ultimately, the golden rule is the perfect recipe is whatever tastes good in the cup for yourself. I get it. Yeah. I get mm -mm. it. Yeah. I get it. I know Not like the... some, some, some things I do kind of throws people off, like agitating after the bloom. Some people get really thrown off, like, why do you agitate? And I agitate pretty vigorously as well. Um, just from experimentation, same, same, same idea as well. Like, kind of back then when, like, when I was seeing baristas, like, you know, trying to, like, like agitate, like, really consistently, like, back, forth, left, right. And almost every single barista, even though they did back, forth, left, right, would kind of do it at a different strength or a different like energy and so even though you created a like cool like let's make it gentle everybody was different which kind of went against being consistent so it was like really weird i went like cool what if i went too much and agitated it too much so the same idea is um i use like um a concentration gradient uh, philosophy where similar to like sugar water so if if i tell you to make a sugar syrup and i make a sugar syrup if i tell you use 100 grams of sugar 
and 50 grams of water and I do the same exact thing and both of us stir it like crazy. We will reach the same saturation point. But if I tell you, stir it 50 times and I stir 50 times, we will hit a different, you get what I mean? We will hit a different point because I can't control how much energy you put and you cannot control how much energy I put. But if I say, stir it to its max, we will hit the as close as possible to the same point. I don't, won't say it's like exactly the same point, but it would be way closer than kind of if you did like tiny stir and I went like, this is my 50 stir and you, your 50 stir was like this, you know? So that's kind of where that... Makes sense, energy, energy making, energy for sure. Mm. Mm. And, and when you, you know, because you just said that you were training for nationals, because uh, obviously, you know, it was up to be, you know, soon, but then it got postponed. Mm. How often and how long do you practice and do you train? Just to give people a bit of an idea what's behind the scenes. So I think just from experience, my training has gotten shorter and shorter. Um, mm. Just because like, I don't have to kind of test so much stuff anymore. I'm more, I know exactly what to test. So I would say like when I first was doing comms, I would like start like three months before, like, you know, four or five hours a day. Um, but now... And also, like, lucky because I've got, like, a young family. I kind of have only, like, the nights to kind of practice. So I would do, like, maybe a month before and, like, maybe two hours every night once the kids go to sleep. That's my practice time. Um, yeah, but, like, I think it's all, it's all about time management more than anything um, and what you want to get out of it. Like, like, you, you can do uh, like 20 hours of experimentation and you might end up like, cool, this one is like better than the other way that you did it. And, and how much better it is. Like for me, I always look at it like, cool, what can I do that would make a bigger difference? If it's going to be a very tiny difference, like, yes, competition like that, Every small bit counts. I also think like, cool, like if I can spend the same time and make a bigger difference, it's better to kind of spend the time to make a bigger difference. And then when I got more time, I would kind of go on like the more finer details to it. But in the, in the macro side of it, it's bigger, bigger changes. Hmm. Yeah, no, and I think ultimately whatever works for you works for you you know and i think it's it's relevant um you know i was talking to mikael jasin and for him uh, a secret for comps is wake up at 4 a.m and go for a run that gives him the mental sharpness and that's okay you know for some people is i was talking to uh, matt lewin and you know he's like you know 16 hour day in the honor lab which is fine i think it's just a matter of what works for everyone and obviously you got young family which is a strong element. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so you you know you worked in a different places. You've been competing. You had different several roles with Honor, which we're gonna go back on in a couple of questions anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know, from my understanding, you also be, you know been the trainer for Melbourne's wholesale account, so you were the person yep. to go to, and you do tutorials on on social media. Is teaching, brewing, roasting. Like, out of all of this big bucket, if you had to pick one passion of yours, which one would it be across the entire spectrum? The whole spectrum? I actually just like sharing. Um, okay. Uh, and I like brewing. So I just like sharing kind of my take on, like, brewing. Uh, I'm not a roaster. I don't pretend to be a roaster. Um, uh I've dabbled a little bit in it, um, which I think everybody should just try a little bit to see whether it's for you. Um, but now just kind of going through so many different roles and stuff. I just, I don't think it, I don't think it as like training. I'm not mm. telling you this is how you do it. Uh, just like if I can make one person like just switch their mind and go like, oh, I can do it a different way. That, that That's kind of all I'm after. Like, so uh, I would just keep, like, for me, um, whether one person watch, like, what I share or 100 people watch what I share, like, for me, it's, it's me sharing 
it's not me trying to get how many views or whatever. It's like so that's why I'm like sometimes I just have too much fun with it. And like my kids watch my videos as well, and they they always complain like, "Oh, why are you doing this?" <laughs> but I think like I love it as well. Yeah, just giving them something like I I could be like eighty years so one day, and like kids will look back and like, oh, my grandkids will look back and like, oh, who you like? That's what you did back then. Like, I don't know. But that's for me. And I also think I also think, and then I read a uh, a question uh, from the from the viewers. I I, I like. I like what you just said. I think a lot of people ask me about social media and sharing and all mm. of these things. And I think we overthink and overcomplicate. I think if you add value even to one person, I'm happy. Mm. Even yes. if out of all these, we are like a twenty something episodes in this coffee with me or a show, or whatever. Even if one mm. person gets something out of it, I'm mm. winning. Yeah, there's a purpose behind it. Um, now, shortstop Melbourne. I don't know you guys. Good to good to see you here. Oh, shut um, up! Uh -huh. Asking uh, <laughs> asking two very cool questions. I love the first one, especially. If you could develop your own competition that could be played out on a world stage, what would be the focus? Uh, no presentation. Damn! Straight in. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so why why I like Brewers Cup also because they have like a compulsory round, um, and I don't know. I always love the compulsory round just because it it's like somebody could have better access to more expensive coffee. You know, have like a big roastery behind them, and that's actually I I, I say that from experience. Uh, to in twenty sixteen when I won. I was the only competitor in everybody in like the finals that didn't come from a roastery. I came from a cafe that had guest coffee. So everyone had like, you know, coffee sauce for them from by the green buyer, like the, the roaster roasted like the perfect coffee for them. I had nothing. Um, I, I used, uh, Again, uh, Esmeralda Geisha that I bought online from Coffee Collective. Just went online who's selling some Geishas. Uh, Coffee Collective was selling. I bought two bags from the retail. Um, um, but what, what kind of took me, like what made me win was actually my compulsory coffee. When everyone was focusing on how, who can bring the best coffee, I was just focusing who can brew the best coffee. Like that's, that's, for me, that's me. Um, uh, like I, I just like that compulsory round where you go like, cool. If I give you a coffee and you don't know anything about the coffee, how do you brew it? And like, if I could like change something, it would be like, like everybody has like the same same coffee, which we do already in um Brewers Cup. It's just uh, like the the difference is still very big because everybody the the dif the difference in the compulsory coffee because everybody gets the same coffee. Okay, everybody brews it a little bit differently. So you could beat the next person, but it's still at the end of the day the same coffee. So you could be like few points only more, but and then they have like a huge farm behind them or something like that, and then and that that separates like makes you a, a lot more di like different. That's the same concept. I always think like the African guy who doesn't have money for. A pair of shoes out running, uh, like a super runner trained in like a special gym wearing the best Nike shoes. Uh, like I, I want to be the African guy with like cheap, cheap shoes. <laughs> I think that I think that really paint the picture. And uh, well, on that we have D Train saying it will be compulsory, and Devin and Devin would win. So he answered that before you answered. <laughs> Danny, Danny Andrade is in the in the house as well and said compulsory for all competition. That's a dream. Uh, Shortstop also asked if you're already on TikTok as well. Uh, no, I'm not on TikTok yet. I should get on TikTok though. Yeah, 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 100%. 100%. Um, cool, man. Um, I'm glad that we got that compulsory. <laughs> that was a good question, actually. Shortstop, sure like, I like that. Um, so, um, going back to where we were in terms of uh, owner, so obviously you grew, uh, you know, you, you, you went through with your career. Uh, mm -hmm. You currently 
and correct me if I'm wrong, they're a retail manager here in Melbourne. Yep. So I've changed retail retail manager. already. Yeah. yeah. Okay, already. So yeah. When so I was a head barista of higher ground before I joined owner. Um, mm. And then I was brought in as like a trainer and kind of went from a trainer to uh, like head trainer. So I look after all the other trainers, kind of went back to being a trainer just for like Victoria, looked after Tasmania, South Australia as well. Um, um, but uh, just February this year, um, I wanted, uh, we had Ona Melbourne coming up and my, my heart actually goes, um, I like serving people like this. Like for me, if, if, if I won like the World Brewers Cup, I would, um, I would like go back to the cafe and serve like the next day. For me, that's, that's what I love to do the most. Like just serve customer and just change people's perception. Like, like one coffee at a time. That's why I said like you're only as good as your last brew. Um, so like it was, there was a chance to go back to like the retail side of owner. So uh, currently I'm the manager of owner Melbourne, although it's not open okay. yet. Um, so I'm just seeing like the build and like doing the hire and getting it all set up. So that's cool. And, and I think, I think that we've kind of covered the questions that I've asked you before, which was about what was your passion. I think that that's probably mm-hmm. it. It's about, yep the people interaction and the change in perception, whereas baristas and non-baristas and uh, be involved in a cafe. And I, I seen the space. Uh, I've seen you, I met you and Tom a couple of months back before all this yep. disaster yeah. pandemic. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward uh, to see you all mm-hmm. guys there and have a, have a, have a brew. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, Ona is like, a little, no, a little. It's like a powerhouse made by lots of like talented baristas. It's like a destination for lots of people, even from overseas. Mm. Um, how important is to be surrounded by many professionals and the right mentors? Keep, you know, they keep putting the bar higher and higher. That, that does that keep you on your toes in a good way? In terms of, you know, mm. I think like. It, it's it's like Ona from the outside looks like a, a, a company of powerhouse people. Um, but um, when I first joined them, I kind of had like the same op- opinion as well. I'm like, oh, this Sasa Sastic, like Hugh Kelly, <laughs> um, like, whoa. And then once, once you're in it, you realize like they're just like you. They're just humans. Oh yeah, of um, course. Like um, and it it uh, I uh, I think it's it doesn't it doesn't change who you are. It just makes you kind of push yourself more. Um, That's where I was going. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it makes you like one. Is there, there is nothing in Honor Coffee that says you need to compete. You just need to best be the best version of yourself. But that that's all we're like, uh, like the company. So and we, we do put to be like the best version of themselves. Oop. That's and that's what I. That's the sense that I'm grasping from all the people that I've talked to, online or offline. And I think it's really important because a recurring answer or question from people is how important it is to have mentors or the right people around you. And I think even if it's online and it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, having one or two or three really, uh, you know, good barista friends who can guide you and help you and you can send them a video of your latest brew. I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And uh, no, cool. Thanks for that, man. Um, Now this is my uh, out out of the box question. I like to have an out of the box in the middle. Um, how do you balance work and family life? We know that coffee is kind of crazy. So how do you find that balance having such a young family as well as, you know, managing now, well, soon to be managing a shop? Yep. I think it's just comes down to communication. Like I just communicate with my wife kind of what I want to do. Um, and like, that's why I say the most important is what makes you happy. If like, like doesn't matter if you have a partner or anything if you do what makes you happy 
um, whether it's like working in like wholesale or doing social media or like working in a cafe. Um, it doesn't like it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing something that makes you happy, um, like it's easy for like your partner and your family to support what you're doing, um, and like it just gives like it, you're gonna be away from them anyway. So at least make what like that that time that you're away, you know, worth worth being away. I think, um, yeah. I like that. Yeah, but, no, but it's, that. It's good. Good question. <laughs> yeah, that's how, like, that's, that's, that's that's how I juggle it. Like like bef before when when I was young and kind of naive and like had like young family um, and still doing competition, I always ask myself like, uh, kind of, not not ask myself. I always look at myself. And I'm like, oh, I got to like, uh, like cook dinner. I got to look after the kids. I don't have much time. And then this, they are like the young baristas who, like, doesn't have as much responsibility. Who can like you know, I uh, finish work at two o'clock. I'm gonna train for the next ten hours, like you know. And I don't have that luxury. And I always think like, oh, that's so unfair that they have that luxury. But at the same time, they don't have my drive as well. Like I got a family, uh, like, and I'm doing this for them. And so that's why I said earlier, it's all about like time management. So, doing two hours and you know you only have two hours compared to you having like 10 hours and you're like, ah, if I don't get it today, I can do it tomorrow. If I don't get it today, there's no tomorrow for me. So, I'm like, cool, let me plan what I'm going to do. And, and how I normally test is pretty simple. I normally do like, like two or three, like minimum two and always just compare. Is this one better than the other one? And like have only one variable that change. Um, and that's it. Like, cool. At the end of the day, cool. This one was better than the other one. And then the next day, I just do the same. Is this new one better than the same one? No. Then we go back to that one. And then, and then that's, that's how you just slowly chip away at it. Um, if, if, you, like, if there's no competition, then you can keep, keep going like, forever. Which, like, that's why the idea is if you're, always just after, if you're always trying to improve, then you don't need competition. It's not a destination. It's not a finish line. You just keep improving. Keep comparing the last brew from your previous brew and just make 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 the brew like your own because at the end of the day, like you're brewing for yourself. And yes, you are brewing for a customer. Like I brew for my wife every single day. That's kinda why I say like I like I brew better just because there's also like this person that you love and you care for that you're trying to brew for, you try to impress as well. And my wife's strength like like I would say, like she's lucky she's not a barista or anything, but she's drank like one of like the best coffees in like the world, and she she'll be the first one to tell me, mm, this geisha is not that nice. <laughs> 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 uh, like oh you've done better you you you've done better before. I'm like, I'm like oh thanks. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, no sugar uh, thing, shit like that. We, 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 well, we, which brings me to I mean, have your kids? Have your kids started drinking coffee yet? Or have they uh, asked you? Yeah, like the the oldest one, when he was younger, he did try to like help. The younger one does help. Like he drinks filter sometimes. But he likes to like kind of stand over me and I, he holds my hand and like we brew together. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, that's why the, my, like, my poor old me method is like pretty simple that they, they even know when to like, okay, now it's a stirring time. Like 30 seconds. Okay, now it's pouring time. Like it's, it's not many <laughs> steps that even a kid can do it. Like, <laughs> well, I, I know that they have seen it a few times in your house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Cool. Um, no, th thank you. I think, um, I think you're right. Remembering what we love is what we do and as well who we do it for um mm -hmm. i think it's really cool i think it's yep. really i think it's something that we need to and that's why it's important to have a picture of your kids and family i don't know on your phone screen saver or whatnot mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's important uh, now going back um <laughs> people are coffee love me and co people are coffee we i, I love you um <laughs> um Going back on the cafe scene, because now you're kind of in a similar situation, even though it's on a Melbourne, but how do you think cafes will stand back up 
after the pandemic lockdown. And I'm going to ask a second question, which is all those cafes like Ona Melbourne that were on hold waiting to open. I have a customer of mine is in the same shoes. I hope she's mm -hmm. watching. Um, how do you think it's going to pan out in your opinion? What, what do you see? Like at, at first when this whole situation happened, I think most people went into kind of like a dark space, um, kind of look at the negative part about it, um, kind of was not demonizing the, the kind of hospitality, but like, like saw a lot of bad things about the hospitality and like how do we come out of this and stuff. And now people are getting a bit more confident like they're getting back to it. But I think it's like this is actually the, in a really weird way, I think this is the best time, not like the worst time. I think it's like the best time to actually open if someone thought of opening. The only thing is you cannot do what you thought uh, you had to do back then. You have to pivot. Like it's, you have to kind of look at the situation and kind of be really grateful that you have such an opportunity like we still live in like a really awesome country and uh, people are still willing to come out ready to have a takeaway coffee and to support you when you come back but it's like really looking at like the brighter side to this whole um pandemic and like it, it similar gave you time to kind, kind of do these interviews like gave me time to do more videos it would give people more time to kind of step back and look at the situation, be more part of like the community. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's actually a really really good time. Okay. It, it would take a, a, it may take a little bit longer. It may take like be faster for people to go back to like what they used to. But it, if if at the end of the day, like you're just looking at like the positives, and you know. Um, it, it doesn't really matter if it's faster or slower. Mm. And on a practical level, thanks for that. I think look, I'm, I'm on the same wavelength. People, mm -mm. people that have been uh, viewing these shows are probably sick and tired of hearing it from me because I, I usually <laughs> say, you know, I, I said the same thing. It's like, as long as we got health, as long as we got mm. that, you know, uh, element of safety and we, you know, we got a roof, um, mm -hmm. It's a good time for self-discovery, self-improvement. So, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm on with you. But in terms mm -hmm. of a practical practical and logistic level uh, mm -hmm. around CAFE's operation, yep. I'm assuming and I'm forecasting that there's going to be a percentage of people who are going to be very much uh, more inclined to go to a shop over another uh, based on cleanliness, hygiene, and different situations I'm, I'm i'm assuming you know a nice beautiful fancy crafted bottle glass bottle with hand sanitizer at the door with you know beautiful gloves at disposable versus some place that's not going to have any of that do you think are you planning are you thinking of any strategies around that before you open uh, the shop in brunswick yeah so so hygiene is still like Uh, it's been more important now than it's ever been. Um, mm. But Australia has always had really good hygiene practices already. Um, it's more, I think it's more about the perception of whether a place is clean or not clean. It's not really about having hand sanitizers and gloves and everything because at the, at like, it, it, it's the same thing. Like if, if like somebody is well-groomed and he walks down the street and and you look at him, he looks clean. You know, he looked like he took a shower, he brushed his teeth, you know, he looks clean. And then on the other side, you get uh, another person walking down the street and he's all covered in like hazmat and everything. And he's even cleaner. But which one scares you? The hazmat scares you because he's too extreme in its kind of idea of being clean. Right? And, and when people go out to the cafe, if they're going out to the cafe, I don't think they're going out because they're like, oh, I want to go to, out to the cafe. Like, I want it to be like this guy in a hazmat like suit. I want to go out to a cafe and make myself feel a little bit more like normal and 
enjoy my experience and have this well-groomed person serve me. You, you get where I'm going? I got so you. I, I, I don't think it's... it's uh, but at the end of the day, it's more understanding your customers and giving them what they're, comf- what they're comfortable course. with. Yeah. Um, and, so, and obviously, yeah. the demographic will change too. I mean, uh, there's going to be differences between the CBD, South Yara, Praren, Brunswick, Fitzroy, and, you know, other areas. Now, that's good. And uh, um, Louis, like coffee, asks, do you miss the Manatiales del Frontino Gesha as much as me? <laughs> yes. Like I, 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 like, I love all coffee. Um, and, like, uh, every coffee has a little bit different kind of... Uh, soft spot in my heart um, hmm. but again it's all it's all because at that at that moment when you had that coffee it was like it, it kind of was like the best coffee you had so it's like like when i said earlier like the first esmeralda i had and that it's weird like i never had it again not that i never had esmeralda again but i never had it that experience again so at that moment it was the best experience at that moment like so you can always like lock it and then put it back in your memory that you can always pull back whenever you want but uh, we, we always grow we keep like getting better and better and I kind of <laughs> keep changing changing as well so I think like that's where it's important I laughed because uh, I like Louis likes coffee well he responded <laughs> goat greatest of all time and also <laughs> you couldn't fuck it up I like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah some 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 coffees like that's a weird one. Like, I think like there's some coffees that it's actually the word is robust, not in terms of robusta, but mm. robust in terms of like like literally you couldn't fuck it up. Like you could <laughs> do like a long pour and be good. You can do a four six pour and be good. You can do any way of pour and it will be good. And it's that one actually falls a lot down to the actual coffee. Some mm. coffees like it's a little bit more delicate. Um, you can't hit it as hard, and then some coffees just have so much to give that, like, it does, doesn't matter how you you take it. Like, you will enjoy it any other way. Of course, we wish that we. That's kind of how all coffee is, like you know. Um, but it's not. <laughs> unfortunately, that's not the fact. And that's as like barista, that's where we come in. We kind of tame down the the bad stuff to give you the good stuff uh, according. And at the end of the day, it's according to our expression of it and according to the customer's like, um, preference of it as well. Yeah, there's no, there's, no right, there's no right or wrong. In that 100%. And I, and I think going to that point, I was talking yesterday uh, with uh, Team Wendell Bow and uh, mm. you know, how he always goes to the same origins. So you yeah. know, he's like always the same. And yet, you know, it doesn't get boring because it's all about you know, your last roast is just as good as your last roast, you know, that, like it works. Mm-hmm. Last yeah. So it's like, and, and, uh, and that reference in terms of as well, coffee flavors. So um, uh, you're right. Yeah. hundred percent. Now, um, I've, what I really like about coffee and doing these interviews is just, it comes clearer and clearer to me that we're such a international, no borders mm-hmm. community. Um, I talk to people in the USA, to people in the Norway, uh, people in Indonesia. Um, now, out of you know, out of curiosity, in your opinion, what countries do you think they are on the rising in the coffee game? As far as baristas or roasters or coffee producer, like, what, is there any countries out there that you've been keeping an eye on, and you're like, wow, these guys are are really evolving? Hmm. So n- normally, the the countries that are coming up financially are normally countries that are more willing to. Um, try different things just because they, they, they've never had it before it's still new to them countries like China is up and rising um, so like 10 years ago like the average income would be a lot lower like a lot less people would be enjoying coffee now China is booming like China has even like their own farms their own roasteries like you know they're buying some of the most expensive coffees in the world Oh, it's really dark out here. <laughs> um, That's all right. More expensive coffees in the world. Um, so mm. China is an emerging market. 
Uh, another emerging market is, I think, Indonesia. Indonesia is pretty good. Uh, again, like kind of high volume, like high um, population countries. Oh, too loud. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. And uh, uh, I mean, Louis likes coffee, says UK is good, I hear. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> and uh, people of coffee is uh, saying China, Korea. And I think, yeah, China, Korea, and Indonesia, I see a lot. I, I think we also go back on the competition. I think that mm. as much as like female baristas become. Uh, a voice for more and more females to uh, take a road towards coffee. I think having a champion from your own country is a stimulation. So when mm -hmm. I was talking to Mikael, uh, Justin, obviously the you know fourth uh, in the world in the WBC, first mm -hmm. ever Indonesian barista to win twice, but also to reach the finals. Yep. I think that's, you know, kind of starting point, almost like what it happened with Korea with the whole, you know, mm -mm. Uh, Caleb, Anon, yeah. Paul, and, you know, and all of them all the way to yeah. last year. So I think, yeah, these three countries, I can see why uh, that mm. would be, yeah, on the rise. You know, Th thanks yeah. for that. Um, mm. um, we nearly talked an hour, so I'm going to ask yeah, you, yeah. usually, usually um, is my, my last question because yep. it can be a little bit long, but... Um, what's next on Devon's planet? What's next in your, on your horizon? And not just with honor, but just in general. So like just more, more videos, more sharing, kind of okay. brewing and stuff. Um, like I'm learning as much, I, I think, as uh, other people are learning from it as well. Um, so that's what I want to get more out there, just more um, sharing different brew methods, um, like whether it's crazy ones as well, like the ones I did with like uh, kitchen towels and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like so that's where, I, I, like that's where I want to put more focus on, kind of like this next few years, just more just sh sharing. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's have you where... have you thought this is a little bit my department together with coffee, but. Have you thought about uh, hosting free? I'm not saying free, but maybe the first one or the few. Some of them could be free, like a Zoom Zoom meeting kind of scenario. I think that uh, that's something that I've seen uh, popping up more and more and more. And I think mm -hmm. it gives an extra kick of experience because it's like you're almost doing it together. Um, yep. And I think that could be something that complements the already the 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 experience. Look, I mean. We got already a few people saying that your videos are very educational. Thanks for all your videos, Devin. Helpful in the time of our life. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, like, uh, and all the people that follow you, of course. Um, but maybe you could have, um, maybe perhaps you could have, you know, your most loyal followers who, like, I think they will gain something. Or just, just an idea to throw in there. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, like I, I'm, like, always trying to find more ways to kind of share more, like, uh, I've been sending a few, like, some papers out for people to try. Um, but, um, yeah, for me, it's not so much about monetizing or, like, you, you know what I mean? It's just literally more kind of me putting it out there and just sharing. But, like, a Zoom idea is a good idea to, like, just get a bit more community together and, like, just everybody kind of bouncing ideas off each other and... Um, yeah, like now, now is like the best time when everyone's kind of stuck in their house. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Sorry if I laughed, but Lewis got got good sense of humor. He said, "Devin, I'm running out of paper towel now." <laughs> <laughs> that 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 one's a, like an expensive commodity. We gotta find some, we gotta find something else that we can use that's really uh, that's too good. Uh, and uh, barista SH am saying I could not afford to buy kitchen towels though, Louis. So <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it makes sense, man. Um, oh, here it is. We are, I've made him Daniel Daniel Horbat. Hey, Daniel, good to see you again. I've made him a coffee in du in Dublin. And he gave me his competition coffee to share with my customers. Man, that's you. Oh, that's I think he's talking about you. Oh, wow. Ooh. 
<laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I think I think sharing is scaring, and it's not about monetization, and that's why I say Zoom. You got really mm. uncapped margins as far as you know. You cannot control, it and you might even have a mm. master master dev and cup uh, uh, session. You know, like mm. a class, and you can actually mm-hmm. see it live on what they do and how to do. It. And I think it'll be very cool. I think it'll be yeah. content that people would consume for sure. And uh, Daniel is closing it for us, I think, in a very nice way. I'll never forget the moment. Cheers, Devin. Um, Thanks, Devin. I think it, it sums up uh, how people love you and how humble you are, uh, which brings me to sharing my gratitude for taking an hour of your time with you know your kids and your family. Thanks for hopping by. I really appreciate you coming here and sharing the things that you share, not just stories, but also knowledge and experiences. And uh, I'm really grateful because we'll be able to share this with more people. We'll be able to rewatch it, listen to it to a podcast or a YouTube format. But I think it's just more than ever, it's important to get together like we have. So uh, thanks, David, for coming on. And if yeah. there's anything that you left off the table, please, um, you know, the stage is yours. Uh, no, I'd just like to thank everybody who tuned in to watch and like to thank you for hosting and like just bringing a lot of like uh, the community kind of together and just sharing. Um, I think like now is like the best time of sharing. You want to come say? <laughs> My son's going to say bye. Say bye. Bye. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you daddy um, back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, no, just like I'll, I'll keep sharing if people, if it's bringing people value, um, just let me know in like DMs and um, and like if you have any questions, like um, I'm more than happy to help. Um, and I can only help from like my own experience. So everything I share, it's actually also like just from what I know, but I can't share anything I don't know myself. Like, like, which is good because when people ask me questions, you know, it starts to make me think and then I just start to research and like kind of do my own experiments on it. And like, yeah, so we're actually learning from each other rather than just me, like, like just speaking what, what I know, which like, that's, that's why I left this community. And like, f- for me, all of this is just giving back to kind of like the coffee community who's like literally taken me under their wing and like like given me this life that I have now. So yeah. thanks man. That's beautiful. Really, really, really appreciate it. And uh I look forward to come and uh, uh see you in Brunswick uh, when yeah, things yeah. go back to normal. Uh and I'll awesome. I'll be there I'll be there at Nationals, I'll be there at Mice. I'll I'll I'm I, I you're I think you're my second guest from Melbourne. Matt Matt is in oh. Melbourne now. So yeah, yeah so yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually can see you, you know, versus yeah, <laughs> others like Norway or the USA. Um yeah man, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Take it easy, stay safe. Thanks dude. You too. See ya. Um thank you all for tuning in. I see you all uh Jade Luxfolk uh Daniel Lewis Lewis <laughs> You made my day a couple of times. Uh, really, really funny. Um, Jessica, sometimes I'm too much in the zone when I talk to, to the guests and it was super good to have Devin on. Um, and I'm in the zone, so I see you. I just don't want to interrupt Devin or, or, or anyone else uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, when they are answering. So uh, big shout out to all of you uh, tuning in. Really appreciate it. I think I'm just an extension of what Devin said. It's about the community, getting back to the community. Um, thank you, people at Coffee. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, Oast Consult, uh, Fair Happy, um, Lux Folk, uh, again. Um, it's, just, it's just giving back, and that's all we're doing. And uh, I'm glad that some people can tune in and find some value out of it. Uh, we'll... For people who missed out, this is going to be available on YouTube and the podcast in a couple of days. Um, there's a Instagram countdown is 25 seconds. So um, as usual, stay safe. If you need anything, if you need help or any recommendation, feel free to DM me. Always happy to answer questions and be there for anyone. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. 
we got a farmer from El Salvador and I'll post more in the next story but I'll also post about Devin. Take it easy and take care guys.